Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about how I made this collection of old books which is actually for the info icon in Atlas Empires. You can learn more about Atlas Empires if you follow the links in the description and you can see lots of breakdowns of how I made different objects in the playlist in the description. Also there's a playlist with detailed tutorials about texture painting within there as well. And you can also find lots of courses on gabbit.co.uk and all the courses are free. So you can see me making the books here, very simple, straightforward objects. It always is with texture painting objects, you keep it very low poly and you just make them kind of as quickly as possible and then sort out the topology afterwards. Lots of people ask me questions about uh, the topology and n-gons and triangles. Well, they're static objects, so you don't really have to worry too much about the topology itself. The only reason you're worried about the topology is whether it's going to be low poly enough so that it's optimized for your games and it's easy to model and paint with. So generally quads are easier to model with because you can obviously do loop cuts through them and things like that. But sometimes you just need to put things into triangles to simplify them and that's absolutely fine as well. N-gons are actually okay as well because they'll be converted to triangles in your game engine. So you can see I've went a slightly complicated way of making this book, but sometimes you just start making it and figure out the best way as you go along. So I made a few mistakes as I was going along. I should have mirrored earlier and done some more simple things, but uh, generally just go for it and then figure it out. That's how I do it anyway. I'm using a solidify modifier on the bookmark. So you just do one plane and then you solidify it and that's the easy way. Then you don't have to worry about all the extra topology, you've just got that modifier and you can change the thickness uh, nice and easily. It's a good idea when you feel like you've finished the model it's to take a quick break there and then come back to it uh, because you kind of notice things uh, more after a bit of a break. You can get blind to your objects and think that everything's going okay because your eyes kind of adapt to the shapes and things. So taking a break, coming back, then you'll notice more of the issues or the shapes and try and design it a bit more so it's uh, fun, interesting to look at and so forth. But taking that break is quite important. Now the difference between this model and all the other models is that this is just an icon. So the topology really doesn't matter at all in this case, it's just what looks good and works well. So you can see in some places I'm probably going over the top with topology. So with the paper, for example, it doesn't really need that many cuts, but there's no worry leaving them in there. However, the icons are supposed to be sort of in that low poly style, that painted style. So I'm trying to not go overboard completely and make it look realistic. I probably spent too long on this icon, actually. It will be very small on the screen, so you won't really notice it. But it can be a tough thing to change your style and suddenly go less detailed with some objects than others. So. I just went with the flow on this one and it took a bit longer than it should have done. So you can see here that I've applied the solidify modifier so that I can unwrap it and change it around a bit so it's uh, slightly more uh, organic and it's got that tiny bit of character. Often I see people's work and it's really straight lines and very rigid uh, but ideally you want to give it that sense of character again and uh, distort it slightly. So these are meant to be old books so they need some sort of distortion as if they're worn out. So I've done the whole unwrap process and I'm ready to set the images up for painting. And I've gone for separate textures for each object just to make it simpler. There's no need to go really low resolution for these textures. So they're all uh, 1K textures and they're all separated out. If for any reason they said, oh, actually, I actually would like to use this in the game, then I'd have to bake them all out onto one smaller texture, which I do have a video for with a detailed explanation, it's within my baking series. Now every now and again I make a slight mistake, not that it's really a mistake but it's more that I could have uh, gone a, a much faster route and I forgot to do mirroring whilst I was painting, which is a bit of an obvious one really but uh, sometimes you forget to set these things up and then you have to paint the other side as well so you've uh, doubled your time for small aspects which can be a bit frustrating but I soon turned symmetry back on. In terms of colours here, you'd think uh, the pages would be really white, but actually they go quite yellowy after a time, so an old book looks quite yellowy. So you can see that I changed the colour from white to yellow later on. It's really important to have reference images at this point, of course, and to look at old books and get some pictures of old books where you can. 
Again, as I've often explained, I'm painting in the shading, so this is all um, a flat texture. There's no real lighting influence when it's rendered, although there is a tiny bit, to be fair, and there is a light in the scene. But generally speaking, all the shading is done within the painting process. So you can see I've made it much more yellowy. I've added a few sort of rips and tears in the texture, so it's got more character now. And you can see here that I'm setting up a layer so that I can do the sort of um, text on the pages in a different layer in case I want to change it or adapt it in any way. It took me a little while to get comfortable with this and uh, find the right brushes and tone because you don't want to go completely black, but I probably could have gone a bit darker. I wanted it to look worn and as if it was uh, sketched on and these sort of strange plans of whatever <laughs> is going on here. Uh, but I could have gone a bit darker, I think. It came out a little bit too light. So later on, I just scrub over the whole layer with a multiply brush to make it that bit darker. But for some reason, it didn't really go as deep as I'd hoped. I was already aware at this point that I'd probably been taking too long on this project because it is just an icon again, so I was rushing at this point, just doing some weird things in the book to make it look interesting. <laughs> this is the section where I would have wanted to go a little bit further and spend a bit more time on, because in a way it's the kind of story element, isn't it, about this object, what's inside the pages. Uh, but yes, I was spending way too much time on it already. I decided to add a noise texture to the brush to give it that sort of uh, papery look. So it's a, a bit of distortion and variation there, uh, rather than just flat brushes all the time. I rarely change my brushes that much, but every now and again use something like a noise texture as a texture mask on the brush. So with the bookmark I wanted to have a sort of velvety look, so again I use that noise texture. It just breaks the surface up a bit and offers that sort of dappled um, sort of effect of cloth. And velvet has that sort of sheen to it, so I was trying to mimic that here as well. It kind of works, just about anyway. Again, I probably might have liked to go a little bit further with that as well. But there's always a time where you think, um, enough's enough, I need to move on to the next one and so forth. I wasn't quite happy with those textures in the book, so I couldn't help myself but to go in and draw some thicker lines and uh, just put a box, a border around uh, some of the pages so it looked a little bit more official, as it were. You can see that I'm isolating the faces to do the sort of block colours, so the uh, book cover has a sort of red or deep red colour. And I've isolated those faces and then uh, filled in with the colour and then I go in and do the details. Uh, still with isolated faces usually, it makes it a bit easier. I'm using the line stroke method here just to make it quicker and easier. I couldn't use the line stroke method for uh, the ones previous because the pages were turned and bent, so you couldn't do that with the ones above. It was a bit uniform really, and I didn't like them like that. I would have liked them a little bit more wobbly, but uh, it, it works out okay. You can see that I'm sort of shading in the parts with a multiply brush and then highlighting the edges, the edge of that, um, the paper uh, with a screen brush. The same uh, technique that I always use. So generally speaking, it's the multiply and screen brushes that I use, but occasionally I'll use a, just a lighter color if I don't want it to go too far towards white. Because the more you use the screen brush, the, it will just keep going towards uh, white. You can see that the top book looks a little bit too rigid. Uh, there's no need for it to look so pointy at the pages where they turn. So eventually I do actually um, split those up a bit. Uh, but I don't think I recorded that bit. I was just tidying up a little bit at the end. So now onto the bottom page and just trying to match up the colors a bit. Uh, so the page uh, looks a similar sort of orangey, yellowy color. And then uh, the sort of burnt paper look where, uh, it, I don't know whether you did it in primary school, where you put a, uh, you're put given a task of doing a treasure map or something and you put the piece of paper in the oven for a little while and burn it slightly. Uh, that's the technique, supposedly, to make things look old by faking it. But anyway, so, so this has got the sort of uh, burnt paper look, but it is a sort of worn paper look as well. Adding a bit of ambient occlusion in there so it's tucked under the book. I regretted that slightly because then I wanted to use another page 
um, over on the other side and suddenly thought, oh well, no, it's got this big, huge burnt bit on the side, which is making it slightly awkward to repeat it. So I had to sort of hide that under the book on the other side. You can see there I'm splitting up the book so it's got a smoother um, page as I was talking about. So I did actually end up recording that bit as well. And there we have it, there's the final piece. I'm quite pleased with this one, but yes, it did take too much time and I can't spend this much time on all the icons. But I thought I'd share it with you because I thought you might be interested to see how these things are going. So do remember to check out the playlist in the description or get across to my website. And if you want to chat to me, then do leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.